Welcome everyone to the L7C podcast. Today we have a very special episode for you guys. It is the first episode of 2024 and we have not just the pop culture expert but our Spotify wrapped number one podcast of 2023, Miss Chelsea Hepper. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Doing good. How are you? I am doing well. Thank you. Fresh off of being in the tops of every chart last year, the Spotify rap, the number two overall, the number one one on YouTube with the other ladies. Like, how are you feeling just coming off that 2023? I mean, I said I would be number one at the end of year last year. Mm-hmm. So I'm feeling pretty good. I'm excited for this next year and what the L7C will do and what I'll do. So it's a it's going to be a good year. You're trying to repeat? Duh. I'm trying to maintain and get three, three top three. Like three within. top threes. Wow. One, two, w- and three. Women empowerment on the L7C podcast. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. this is January again. Happy New Year, everyone. So and it's the very first episode of 2024 again. And you picked the topic, which is a very interesting topic for the time of year we're in as the year is starting. Seasonal depression. So, Chelsea, first, what is seasonal depression? Um, I don't know the exact, I can look up the scientific definition, mm-hmm. but like seasonal depression, um, it's when you're affected by the changes in weather mm-hmm. and the times of year. Some people get it when it's summertime, but the most common is when the months get colder and the days get darker. So right Mm -hmm. now we're kind of in peak seasonal depression um, time just because in theory, Ohio is supposed to be colder than what it is currently, but it's cold. The sun's not out. People aren't active as much like outside and getting that nature, but that's kind of the gist of it. Yeah, no, you hit it right nail on the head. The quote unquote definition happens during certain times of the year, fall or winter. Um, it's just a type of depression because of the shorter days, the less sunlight, like you already said, triggers a chemical change in the brain, leading to symptoms of depression. So you hit mm-hmm. it right on the head. And uh, this site says it usually starts during adulthood and the risk of it increases with age. And it's mm-hmm. rare with people under 20. And it also said women are affected more than it than men. What are your thoughts on those things? I think it that makes sense. But I feel like me personally, I've always kind of struggled with seasonal depression even in like middle school and high school Mm -hmm. um because i very much remember like coming home from school and just needing to sleep because i was just emotionally and physically exhausted so i go home take a nap for an hour or two wake up do my homework eat dinner and then do like if i was involved in a sport or work or whatever do that and then immediately just go back to bed um so I feel like I've suffered with it or dealt with it for a very long time. Um, but I do think it's true like that women feel it more than men typically. Yeah. And you just named one of the most common symptoms, increased sleep, daytime drowsiness, mm-hmm. uh, loss of interest and pleasure in activities that you used to like when it was like warmer outside, social withdrawal, increased sensitivity yeah. to rejection. Like there's a whole bunch of, symptoms when it comes to the seasonal depression so what are ways that people can deal with them oh sorry my cat's a little vocal tonight (laughs) but i think one is uh the easiest but the sad lamps that are out there um they've definitely gotten more popular both at home and in the office a few of my coworkers they have little sad lamps on their desks which I honestly need to get one Um, just because we only have one window in our office building. So we don't get a lot of sunlight. Mm -hmm. So when you're going into work, it's dark out when you're coming home, it's dark out. So you don't get that sun and you don't get that fresh air. So sad lamps are definitely beneficial. Um, Even with just light in general, like not having on your big lights, like your overhead lights, people have the soft lighting and you should do that in general because it makes it more, fun and it's cozy but then exercise 
um, new year, new you, quote unquote. I hate that phrase, but I'll use it here. But exercise in general is good for your mental well-being. Maverick. Um, oh, yeah. But exercise because it releases endorphins and endorphins make you happy. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you do that in the fall or any time regularly, it's only going to help you as the seasons change. But I think getting into the swing of it in the winter time, it's a good time to start. What else are you doing? There's not a whole lot going on event wise or extracurricular activities. So that's another thing. Reading and sleeping. And then my personal favorite is binge watching TV shows that I've already seen a million times. Yeah. So seasonal depression shows, you brought that up in the show notes. Mm-hmm. What shows? I don't know. Is it by a person by person? Like what specific shows help you in seasonal depression type stuff? Like what type of shows? So like seasonal depression shows, kind of like the unwritten definition is like comfort shows that you've Mm -hmm. already seen a million times. So it's something that you've watched either all the way through or you've seen enough where it's predictable Mm -hmm. um, because you you just want that stability in your life. um, And that's the reason why you keep going back to that specific show. And for me, my top two are Grey's Anatomy and Gilmore Girls. So I kind of alternate between those two year after year. Um, I'm kind of bringing the first season of Bridgerton into that too. But last year I watched Gilmore Girls. Right now I'm rewatching Grey's Anatomy. So it's predictable. It brings you comfort. It's something that you can throw on and enjoy, but not necessarily have to pay attention to. But it also doesn't like pull at your emotions as strongly as something would if you were watching it for the first time. So like in Grey's Anatomy, there's a lot of sad and tragic things that happen, but I've already seen them so many times that it's not as heartbreaking when it does happen. So they're comfort comfort shows. Yeah, like they're just like a little warm little hug. You You also brought up a phrase that you don't like, the new year, new you. Um, Mm -hmm. We're just finishing up the holiday season and going with the anxiety stuff like, Post holiday blues, like, is does that help? Does that enter the seasonal depression? Is that its own separate thing? Like, I feel like it goes hand in hand because it it fuels part of the depression, which okay. then triggers everything else. But I feel like you spend all this time in the fall, like you're excited for the leaves to change, you're excited for Halloween, blah blah blah. But you also know that the next wave of holidays is coming. Mm-hmm. So like Thanksgiving, it's kind of like the pregame to the holidays, if you will. Mm-hmm. You're, you get to see your family, you get to eat good food, um, you get a few days off of work, typically. Um, and then it leads into like the magical season of where you get to go watch holiday lights and you get to mm-hmm. decorate your house. Mm-hmm. You get to go shopping for yourself or for other people, like all those stereotypical hallmarky things so it's like endorphin overload and then once that's done it's kind of just like oh well now what we don't have anything to look forward to except for january and february the coldest months of the year where we live so those post-holiday blues definitely hit no i i agree uh because like you already said once it gets to the end of october like halloween Mm -hmm. uh, marketing and everything starts building towards building towards christmas um like then thanksgiving obviously is in there as well and then new year's is there but it's after halloween everyone starts to like build towards christmas like the holidays like normal working people are excited because they know in the month of november and december they're gonna get guaranteed days off because of the holidays and then like that's most of the times where people take their vacations to be with their families and all of that so being away from work's a happy thing so when you're doing all that and then when it's over it's just like Oh, now I'm back to work and the way a lot of people are is during the holiday season, people are a lot nicer in a way. But then once it at when it ends, people are just magically not nice or not as nice anymore. No, I agree with that. And I feel like the niceness also has to do with the weather and like the peak of seasonal depression, Mm because right now it's manageable for the most part. but those January blues like end of January beginning of February that's when it's just like 
the hardest for me because mm-hmm. that's when we start to get that cold weather. That's when we start to get the snow here. We get more sunlight, which is great, but that doesn't help me with the cold. And you said you hate the term new year, new you. Mm -hmm. Why do you not like that term? Because it is a very common term, especially the first week of January. I hate it. I think it's silly. Just in the sense of like, you don't change overnight. Like you can create new practices and new habits, whether it's physical, mental, or just your general demeanor. But it takes time to change. Like you say, new year, new me. Like if your goal is to be more financially sound or be a generally better person like you have to develop those habits and like actively work on that and change takes a significant amount of time and it might not happen within the 12 months or it might not happen at all like you could be really good about it for the first two months of the year and then just drop those habits because it's easy easy to do so do you think then new year's resolutions goals do you think they're overall good or not good for people? Mm, I personally struggle with them. I don't think I've set a New Year's Eve goal or New Year's goal for myself in several, several years. Just because like you want to follow like the stereotypical ones. Like I've mm-hmm. said I want to lose weight and be more active. And then I put too much pressure on myself or set myself up for failure. But that's just me personally. Or like you want to, I don't even know what a good New Year's Eve goal is anymore because I just don't do them. I just, I feel like you go into it with good intentions, but ultimately some things are not attainable and other things like we're humans, we set ourselves up for failure. But I do like the TikTok trend, the ins and outs for 2024, I can get behind those. So what's that trend for people who don't have TikTok? So it's kind of like people are just posting what's in for 2024 and what's out. So it's very much like, do you remember in magazines where it's like the fashion, what's in the mm-hmm. season? Um, so people are doing it more like simple or attainable tasks and things. So it's not necessarily a deeper goal that you're working on. Like an in thing could be not overspending on products until you've run out of your makeup products or whatever or it's drinking more water or reading more fun books or in what's out putting unrealistic pressure on yourself or supporting this company so it's very it's not superficial because some people get really deep with it but at the same time it makes it more of a fun spin on new year's eve goals if that makes sense that makes sense. Uh, I feel like that's because we usually with the in and out thing on these TikTok videos, is it like one thing? Or are they doing two? Because it's what, 30 seconds or less? Yeah, like it's it's it depends on the person. Like I've seen people who have like multiple different like sides that you have to go through for like mm-hmm. what's in and what's out. And then I've seen people where they can combine like their top five for each. So it's really just like what is in. Like for me, mine would be like working out because it makes my body feel good like that's what's in not because i want to lose weight or have a certain body image what's out is depriving myself of not eating good food like that's that would be like an in and out that makes that makes sense especially with the way we're now i mean a lot of people consume their content on tiktok and since it's 30 seconds or less, they can get the message very quickly, especially if it comes through their mm-hmm. algorithm. I do yeah. feel like with the resolution thing, it's just in general, you don't have to wait until New Year's Day to make a goal. And you don't necessarily have to do it your goal on New Year's Day if you want yeah. your, go- your goal to be like, hey, I want to be whatever X amount by this day or by next year, then that's fine. But it doesn't necessarily have to be on new year's day and then i don't fault people who do want to have a goal like to start the year and then they put like a day that they want to get it done like what they call the smart goals like measurable attainable all that stuff so Mm -hmm. but then i i I agree on your point that pressuring yourself to have your resolution done because i mean the number one thing everyone makes a resolution well majority is to lose weight like 
and to work out more. That's usually the number one New Year's resolution. Every gym, the first week of January is extremely packed. Like there's a lot of people you don't know if you're going to the same gym you've been going to. And then by the next week, they're all gone. Right. So, so right. then it's like you lose motivation. So I think that's what the pressure thing. Like I don't have to lose five pounds in two hours. Like I can, if I want to lose five to 10 pounds, I can, as long as I lose it by the end of the year and I'm working hard, so be it. And if I don't lose that weight, but I feel a lot better, my body feels better, then it's still a win anyway. Mm -hmm. So that's just yeah. how people need to see it. No, I just think it's a fun, fun little spin. Like, I don't know. It just, it makes me happy. No, but anything else on seasonal depression, New Year's resolutions, in and out? trends have you seen any of the in and outs of 2024 that you don't agree with mm, not necessarily don't agree with like in terms of moral beliefs but mm -hmm. in terms of trends right now people it's so stupid um but the uh, gen z's are saying that um almond nails or round nails are out and they want to go back to square nails and that is something i will never ever do personally okay okay that's that's one that's really grinding my gears just because i mean it's like the chuggy do you remember when that phrase was going around mm -hmm. like when they were saying that skinny jeans were chuggy or the front tuck that people do with like sweaters and stuff thank you queer eye is Doogie, like it just it looks good and it's what we're comfortable with mm -hmm. i don't know there are certain trends in fashion and in makeup where yeah that needs to go but if it makes somebody happy that's great mm -hmm. like, i don't know but i'm also still gonna judge you if i can see your underwear lines in a specific outfit <laughs> but because i can but aren't they doing that literally so that people could see them now i mean I mean, there's like the uh, Hailey Bieber thong that she did at Met Gala, which I guess is acceptable if you're famous. But if you did that in real life and I saw you out and about at Target, I would judge the absolute hell out of you. Oh, abs absolutely. And then, you know, they're walking around with the tripod and they're getting everyone's reactions. Yeah, like I'm judging because sometimes you need to be judged. I need to be judged. Mm -hmm. Like, this is not a, like... I, I also need to be humbled sometimes. No, I don't disagree. I do not disagree with anything you said there. So, obviously, next month is the month of February. There's a lot of things in February. Uh, mm -hmm. There's Valentine's Day. There yeah. is <laughs> there is the Super Bowl, which comes with the Usher halftime show. So, what you talking? You going to talk Valentine's Day next month? You gonna are you gonna just we gonna add the new pop culture thing for years forward. You always review the halftime show. Like, what do you think well, for February? I feel like I'd rather do a halftime show for okay. years moving forward, just because Valentine's Day. I don't. It's not my favorite holiday. It's I, as somebody who's been single and somebody who's had a relationship during it, I don't like it. Yeah, I understand. I do know from that end of year podcast, the other people have talked about talking about the list that came out at the end of last yeah. year so that may be a thing it could be do we do we know like the results of our little survey yet oh i actually need to look that tonight great call great call because <laughs> i know not everyone as well i'm gonna say that like not everyone's done it and then i'll look and it'll be like eight out of nine i'll be like oh but uh, no i will definitely check that out and then we'll mix and match I'm excited for that. I think it'll be fun. Are you, are we going to determine the topics or do you think you'll determine the topics for nope. us? I am not determining any of the topics. So whoever, my goal with that is whoever matches with who, I'll just let them know and be like, hey, mm -hmm. this person said they want to do stuff with you. You guys figure out yeah. a topic and then I'm still waiting on some responses. So, and then... You guys tell me the topic and you tell me when you guys are a time that both of you guys are able to do it in the evening. And then 
go, we'll go from, from there. there. Yeah. Because I feel like the Super Bowl would be a good time for yes. me to do one because I could talk about the commercials in the halftime show and they can cover the football depending on who it is. That is that's such a that's a good point. Do we know who's who's doing the the sports yet? You mean like the Super Bowl game? Yeah. I mean that would NFL, so that would fall under Justin. No. But like who's what are the teams? Do we oh, know? No, that? we don't know yet. The playoffs start in January. Oh my god. Yeah, the playoffs start this month and then um yeah, they'll start this month, and then the Super Bowl will be that second, the 12th or whatever, second Sunday of February. Hmm. No, I think I'll, I'll, I'll probably do the, the Super Bowl in right. February. And then okay. in March, who knows? Got to figure it out. Got to come with the content to stay. Well, March, I mean, is, is International Women's Month, so you guys can figure something out. Oh, for sure. You got to try and stay number one, man. Yeah. I'm very, very proud of the listeners and of us and me. me, ah! me. <laughs> With that being said, thank you, Chelsea, for being the first episode of 2024. Thank you, everyone, as she said, for the support and all of that. She will be back in February reviewing the Usher halftime show. We will see what Usher brings to the stage. Just real quick, do you think he brings any guests? And if you can name two, who do you think they would be? Oh, oh, I think he will bring guests. I think Justin Bieber is absolutely going to be a guest. Okay. It makes sense. Justin Bieber is his baby, his child. Um, the, this would be random, but I could see it potentially happening. But Nicki Minaj, just because of she's been putting out new music and she's been doing interviews again and like doing X, Y, and Z. So I could see that potentially mm-hmm. happen. Okay. I, th- I would say like that's like a a random one that he would bring. Because I don't... Have they done music together? I don't think they have. No. Um, no, I don't think so. No, but I, I could... No. It would one of those random side quests for 2024. I could see that happening. Okay. But we'll my book him. with J Biebs. I feel, yeah, I feel like that's pretty, pretty safe. There was one um, that someone said because they have a lot of music together, but if he's still, I don't know if he's deemed controversial anymore to the masses because he still makes a lot of music and people listen to him. They talked Ew. about Usher and Chris Brown. No. You don't think he would bring Chris? I would hope not. Not after the year of Rihanna. People, his music still. I, I don't know, man. That one's always hard because she literally has done music posts that with him. I know it is very hard, and I get it because there are some Chris Brown songs that I still listen to. I hate myself every time I do, but I do, and it would make sense <laughs> between all three of them. I. But the same could be said with like Nikki and her her husband, specifically mm-hmm. he's a piece of garbage. But I personally, I hope that Chris Brown is not there. Yes, I guess you just have to look if how many songs Usher is going to do if he's going to play the hits. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I feel like yeah, it's probably. I mean, it's going to be there. So you're going to need Ludacris and. All that and Lil John, but it's just like Luda well, and Lil John would be fun. I mean, if they're doing the full, yeah, you got to have the whole, yeah, the crew. But if you just look at Usher's catalog, it's like I don't feel like Confessions Part Two is something you sing at a Super Bowl, <laughs> even though that's probably his most that and yeah, are probably his two most famous songs ever. Right. So it's like we'll see, man. He has a very extensive catalog, so. He really does. Like, that's that's the wild thing. But with that being said, thank you everyone for listening to L7C Podcast. We'll be back reviewing Usher's performance. And with that, Happy New Year. Signing out. 
thank you for listening to this episode of the L7C Podcast. Be sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms, and we'll be talking to you guys soon. Take care.